But I will say, Eric and everybody else, I love when companies like On and I. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you wanna scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower. Butter to the bread. Here we go. A 50 mile full review for the Ultra Temp 3 Zero Drop fans out there. I'm actually very, very curious. For me, for Zero Drop, and what is Zero Drop? For the new viewers out there, if you're just getting into running shoe reviews and you feel overwhelmed, I don't worry. Just a little patience. I'll try and do as best as possible moving forward with running shoe reviews to explain different um, features of shoes and different styles of shoes. So this is zero drop, meaning the slope inside the shoe from heel to toe. Zero drop means it's flat as a pancake, okay? So we're looking at 29 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot. For me, I prefer zero drop for easy days and for stretching out my lower leg especially, okay? But I'm curious, ultra fans out there, let me know because I am, I'm not like, I'm, some people only train and race in ultra shoes, zero drop shoes. I would love to hear ultra, if you're all in on ultra, why you're all in on zero drop. Like what, what is the appeal for you for zero drop? Make your case down below in the comment. I know and explain. So for all the new viewers out there, maybe the newer runners as well, you can go down in the comments and Read as well. DGR strong. Let's help each other out. Here we go. As I already said, 29 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot, zero drop. Let's do the twist test. Oh, yeah. Neutral 100% for the trails. Okay, neutral trail shoe. Look at that outsole as well. We'll get to that in a minute. Women's size 8, men's size 9 on your screen. My size. Let's just confirm. 9.4, 9.5, right around there. 9.4 or 9.5 ounces in my size, which Really anything, especially with that kind of stack height, that's why the score is so high. And for a trail shoe, that's pretty solid. Really anything under 10 ounces I, for a training shoe, I will take for the weight. So there you go, 8.5 out of 10. We're looking at an engineered mesh, nothing crazy to write home about, but a great lockdown. Just ultras, I must say, they're getting better with their lockdowns compared to let's say two years ago, I think they've come a long, long way. And let's just confirm, yes. Okay, let me, hold on. It's been a little while since I put my hand inside the shoe. We are looking at a fully gusseted tongue. That is why the score for the lock, I couldn't remember exactly. That is why the score is so high for that lockdown. Overall score, and let's just do this. Yeah, very loose. So if you prefer a stronger heel counter, I'd recommend staying away from the Ultra Tim 3. Overall score for the upper is eight out of 10, and partially because this great overlay over the toe box here, this TPU, nice rubberized overlay. Actually, you can see on this one right here, I was taking it out in some mud and water, and my toes, like my feet were not getting muddy or gritty uh, through the foot strike at all out there on the trails and last but not least it does have a gator trap in case you want to throw on some gators you know for those wet runs out there on the trails that are coming sooner rather than later in the summer months which we are all very excited about onto that midsole 
standard score for the ride and energy, what they call their Quantic uh, Midsole Material, spelled Q-U-A-N-T-I-C, and it's an EVA-based midsole. Again, nothing crazy to write home of. It's just gonna get the job done for you out there. It does have their Interflex technology, so they are all about, Ultra is all about creating shoes that flex and move with the natural movement of your foot, okay? So the bones, your metatarsals, all right? And we're actually, we're gonna talk about, well, let's do it right now. And there's the overall score for the mid. So actually, and let's do the durometer real quick. Yeah, so again, I can just stick my thumbs in. It is, it is giving, but it's not giving like a bounce back, okay? Which is why, again, the scores are pretty standard for that midsole. It is gonna get the job done. Outsole, we got the max track with directional lugs really an incredible outsole like you are I, I i they nailed it and yes flex grooves especially here under the forefoot that slope slightly upward up how, how to describe it upward and inward for the on the medial side anyway it's their inner flex technology just to help again your foot flex with the shoe so you feel i and i felt it and with that tw it's so interesting i'm gonna say it feels quite a bit different than a Hoka trail running shoe uh, where you feel a little more united with the ground with the dirt underneath as you're out there like a little more responsiveness or uh, push off power uh, in this with this inner flex technology that ultra is putting out so overall score for the outsole eight and a half out of ten I am actually very very pleased fit I went true to size oh man oh gosh I wish I would have gone a half size down maybe a full size okay of course ultra is known for very wide toe boxes which is one of the reasons i prefer not to race in the shoe or race in ultra shoes because i prefer a, sn a more snug fit but there's my score uh, it's just uh, it's just a lot of space and it's maybe and i don't have a wide foot if you have a really wide foot especially a four foot uh you you know i bet ultra would be a great option for you but for me it's just you know or you almost have to wear extra extra wide you know thick socks um just so you don't feel like you're swimming around inside the shoe at least in my case comfort score eight out of ten very pleased positives it is that inner flex technology uh which again is helping for me uh strengthen my lower legs i just feel that push off power as i'm going up and down the trails and my drawback is the fact that uh it's just so much room in the toe box uh, but some people love it. And again, it's okay. Why the why so much room in the toe box is the splaying, allowing the toes to spread out completely. Splay, S-P-L-A-Y. Durability prediction? Okay. Hmm. For the full benefit of the midsole, I'm going to go 500. I think for the outsole, blah, blah, keep going. Six, seven, hundred, eight hundred. Like, it's a great outsole. Really great. And I don't know about the... I don't know about the upper, okay? So that's why the score, pretty standard, seven and a half out of 10. So I, I'm not sure if the upper and the midsole is gonna survive as long as that outsole. Just a great outsole. Ultra, good job there. How will I use this shoe? Who is the best for? Of course, zero drop fans uh, who prefer just a little more stack height uh, through on underfoot out there on the trails. And then just a daily, a workhorse daily trainer for zero drop if uh and or okay if i had a little bit of tightness in my soleus or lower calf muscles i would opt for this you know if i'm just feeling a little sore a little tired and i just wanted to kind of bop along out there on the trails not overdo it uh just to get a nice stretch out there on it you know probably um four to eight mile run probably nothing more than eight miles for me for my liking all right price point 139 dollars standard score seven and a half out of ten other shoes to buy it's always difficult because whoa well, because it's zero drop you can't really put it up against other shoe that's which is why ultra has really found their niche or niche within the running world which is why i think some people love ultra and some people are like yeah i'm gonna stay away from ultra so here are the other trail running shoe options on your screen from ultra the lone peak 5 the olympus which is the maximalist option and then the superior which is a lower stack height okay and i'll try if i remember i'll try and link to them down below in the description but also upper right hand 
corner shoe quick specs soak them in one more time uh of course zero drop 9.5 ounces in my size 268 grams okay engineered mesh with reinforced overlays all right and that 50 mile full review score pretty solid score everybody actually 7.65 out of 10 i am i'm pleased oh goodness <laughs> i'm pleased i just oh man i think the biggest thing is uh just yeah it's just the fit it's just I'm, I'm swimming i'm swimming in the toe box ultra so who knows maybe someday interesting okay ultra i'm gonna throw a little idea at you keep the zero drop but let's tighten up the toe box a little bit so the splay for the narrower feet like i'm talking you know i don't i don't have a narrow foot i would call i'd say my foot is fairly standard but just like not quite as much splaying would be interesting to me. All right, there you go, everyone. Comment of the day. This is uh, in connection to actually a, a vlog from maybe oh, a week or two ago. Uh, but I just found it as I was sifting through the running shoe reviews when we were talking about the on and it connects to running shoe reviews in general but the on cloud stratus rem uh, remember that vlog upper right hand corner so shout out to eric eric said i think it really says something when even a brand's sponsored athletes on in this case the swiss company were they were caught racing in other shoes uh this really happened eric says i remember seeing a story where a couple on athletes were caught using vapor flies to qualify for the olympics I think it was in England. So I saw this story as well. And then Eric says, good morning, DGR fam. So actually, Eric, when somebody spray paints a racing shoe, and I think that's, uh, I, I don't like that. When somebody like to try and cover up that they're racing in, you know, let's say the, the vapor flies, I don't like that at all. But I will say, Eric and everybody else, I love when companies like On, and I've heard On, who else, um, was it Saucony? I forget who else it was, but they, or maybe New Balance. Basically, they told their professional athletes, you can race in whatever shoe you want if it if it helps you qualify for the Olympics because they, they realize that their shoe quality is not as high as other companies, let's say Nike or Adidas or, you know, maybe Hoka. Um, I actually love that because they're putting the athlete ahead of their shoe. They realize, oh man, we need to innovate in order to catch up with these other shoe companies. Um, so Eric, it's a little bit of that two-way street where I don't love, I don't like when they spray paint shoes to try and say, oh, like I've seen it where um, Adidas sponsored athletes are racing in the Vaporfly on the, on the roads for the marathon. But I do love when companies say, no, 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 no. I'm trying to think of the, if you, if you can remember the other, it was on and it was another company. I think it might've been in the uh, UK marathon Olympic trials where I saw it as a story about that as well. Anyway, thank you, Eric, for the comment of the day. I love this question of the day. Here we go. If you had to choose a running product or company or service to be the spokesperson for which would you choose like you love this company this pro the running company product service so so much that you would a hundred percent like work for this company as their spokesperson okay where you just are like on the front lines because you love it so so much okay ah i don't know which i would choose. there's so many you know whether it's a running shoe whether it's an app whether it's a food product, like a, a nutrition product, whether it's socks, whether it's you know technology, like a watch, could be any product out there. Let us know in the comments. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. We'll toss it to the ultra running shoe playlist, okay? Lot, not lots, but um, quite a few ultra shoes that I've tested uh, will live right there, right there, right there. Okay, keep turning that doorknob, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.